Okay, so this is how we use all these cool apps for the behind the scenes of all our cinematics. If you like it, like and subscribe. Ah, ah. Ah, don't understand why Jan keeps buying so intense. on the lights. <laughs> Told you so. I do have to say, Apple has got some awesome applications that just made me want to ditch my custom PC, and if it wasn't because I enjoy gaming from time to time, or using tools such as Premiere Pro, this PC would honestly just not exist. My days can get quite hectic, mostly when I deal with Mondays and Tuesdays, and so for me, being able to use apps that allow me to work faster is like a gift God sent for mankind. This is by no means a day in the life, in fact this is all about sharing the apps I use on the MacBook that allows my professional life to be a bit less of a pain in the ass. The most important thing in my everyday life when it comes to work is my morning planning, which is why Notion rules about 80% of the logistic aspect this channel has. I heavily use its database features to link my sponsorships to my calendar as well as link those sponsorships to the video topic of the week. I have my own naming system for every video correlated to every month and the best part for me is that I can treat my finances like an Excel spreadsheet to calculate things such as prices taxes and so on. It minimizes my point of entry when it comes to using Excel because everything is in one place, including attached PDF contracts, invoices, briefs and so on. I am a night owl for the most part and the fact that I can use this app as a to-do list, a weekly calendar, custom text snippets, my finances, it's sort of nice to be able to have dark mode as an option. I do have to admit I recently started paying for it after realizing how much I use it. But for my partner and I, it's been super worth it, unlike their Chrome extension which in my opinion is not as good. Chrome is my daily web browser and will most likely forever be, mainly because of the developer tools they offer which allow me to properly code websites and because of the fact they offer the best extensions, one of them being Karma. Karma has been a sponsor I keep coming back to because I use their Chrome extension all the time. It is also an app and it ensures you never miss a price drop or a coupon code when shopping online. It allows me to stay up to date with my tech and make sure I get the best prices for events such as Boxing Day. During the holidays, it allowed me to find cool accessories for our videos at fair prices when I was shopping for example at stores like moth.us. By clicking on the link down below, you can download Karma for free and add it as your Chrome extension. With it, you can visit your favorite stores, find a cool case for your iPhone and click on the button slider to save your item. You can select when you want to be notified and what list you want to add the item to. I do get notifications via email or mobile push to know when my saved products go on sale or come back in stock. I have personally been creating lists when it comes to buying products for the videos so I can organize all my tech for the videos and help with impulse purchases. At checkout, it is able to automatically scan the web for coupon codes but note that this is a special feature only available on the computer. And when shopping at select retail stores, Karma gives cash back to you and a good cause. You can download Karma for free using the link in the description down below. Although it's not the only extension I heavily recommend, whenever I have time for web work I enjoy using the React and Redux extensions. These basically allow me to use the developer tools to inspect React components and debug applications when their states changes. The cool thing is that it always tells me which websites are written in React. Next to it we have a color picker. This is a fun little tool that is mainly used when I see cool colors when doing design work. If I ever wish to have a full website design in hand or have the need to take a full screenshot of a personal account, I do find myself using GoFullPage for this to convert these into PDFs. 
To declutter my bookmarks, I do enjoy using Identity for this. In fact, it's my startup page when I open Chrome. It's a simple little app where you can organize and use tiles to represent your favorite websites, and this is where for me, Dashlane was extremely advantageous as a password manager. But I mainly find myself using the Dashlane standalone app, just like the Grammarly app. And that's mainly because I moved away from Gmail in order to use Superhuman. Yes, it is a Google extension to let you log into Gmail with it, but I mainly use it as my primary emailing app. No matter which Apple device my heart desires to use during that day, Superhuman is on all of them. I do mainly enjoy using it in the morning on the laptop because it allows me to use all the shortcuts it has and it's probably been one of the best decisions I've ever taken this year. It just organizes my emails super well and allows me to perform actions upon them such as marking them as done, favorite selective emails, using my own custom snippets when replying to them, and even knowing when someone opened my reply. Sadly, this year I decided I will not do any web work for clients so I won't be answering any code related emails, but it doesn't mean that I won't be using VS Code for my own personal work. In my opinion, there has never been a better text editor for code, and I think my love for it comes from the ability to be able to install any sort of extension. I got quickly fed up with losing my settings and extensions so I did connect it to my GitHub account to save them. In reality, my settings.json file is fairly simple and my extensions are not that many, but if you are a React developer, you'll love using the ES7 extension. I do recommend you give Prettier a try to format your code, LifeSass to compile your SAS files, bracket pair colorizer to avoid yourself from getting lost in code, and auto rename tag to save time renaming your HTML tags. Oh, and pale night guys, that's my theme. Fun fact though, the terminal on VS Code isn't so different from iTerm2, but now that I installed Power Level 10K and oh my ZSH on this machine, everything is so much cooler. The installation process really isn't complicated. In fact, I followed a step-by-step -step video and I even got creative with it so I could set it up to my own personal liking. I wasn't a fan of the terminal because it wasn't much of a helpful tool, and this mainly comes from the fact that I like to know my Git situation and much more of course. Just don't expect to use this with Unity, I know. In game development, well, it turns out that ever since I benchmarked the MSI laptop with Unity, I've been watching videos about it. I've been wanting to learn to develop games for fun just so I can sharpen up my object-oriented skills with C Sharp. The cool part is that, well, I can still use VS Code to edit code files. As long as I have the C Sharp extension to help, things can be a lot easier. To be honest, I just fell in love with this app ever since I was able to apply changes to the world and visualize them within the game. Look, most of these apps do produce junk special Unity. Before I go to bed, I usually like using Clean My Mac. It keeps my laptop clean and deletes system junk files to free up some space. It does scan for viruses and malware to keep the MacBook safe, but I just don't find myself visiting weird torrent websites with this. I do like their space lens feature because it looks for the biggest folder on memory so you can manually delete some stuff. I also use the app to uninstall applications, but overall, I really enjoy their UI and UX. Just like I enjoy how simple one switch is, nothing beats an app that can do multiple things in one place, and that's why I recently hopped on one switch. I'm still on trial, but essentially, it's an app that can group all of your favorite switches together. I can quickly toggle dark mode, connect my airpods, enable true tone, empty my trash can, and even eject discs. There's an overwhelming amount of other switches you can activate, but for me, these are the ones I've been sticking with. I do like the fact that paste sticks with saving my copy paste as snapshots. This for me has mainly been useful when coding, but if you press shift command V, you allow yourself to discover a whole new world of copy and pasting. The awesome thing about this app is that it truly allows you to sort your clipboard and it's not only strictly with text. You can also use images and links in here. Don't blame yourself if you start using this as a bookmarking tool as well. Powerful little app but not as powerful as Alfred 4. And Alfred 4 is like the Google of things, but living in your system. Out of all the apps, I'd say this might be the one that increases productivity the most. It's a lot more powerful than Spotlight because it searches everywhere, including the net. And there are a bunch of awesome tools such as Workflow where you can even create a shortcut for dark mode. There's a whole video explaining Alfred 4 in depth and I 
strongly suggest you check it out. And I also suggest you check out VPNs. Any VPN really, it doesn't need to be Nord. I just happen to use Nord VPN when I'm out of the office since it's one of the most reliable VPNs out there with no load data. It's easy to turn on so I can dynamically change my IP address whenever I'm on a public Wi-Fi. Easily one of those apps that are a must because virtual private networks give you online privacy and anonymity. It's so easy to use apps like Wireshark to sniff the web and steal credentials from people on public Wi-Fi. So again, it really doesn't need to be NordVPN, but please do use one to avoid hackers from taking over. If it makes you feel more secure and you don't necessarily want to use a VPN, I would try something like Dashlane. It can at least secure your passwords, credit card info, and even important notes you need. I use it along identity to keep things in one place when it comes to logging in, but be sure that if there is ever a data breach, they will let you know. Dashlane uses AES-256 encryption, and so for those who have studied a bit of cybersec, here is what that means. I just really enjoy this app because I can have it as an extension on Google Chrome and on all my Apple devices. Just like GoodNotes. GoodNotes is a wonderful app that I basically recommend for school. If you guys watch any of my iPad videos, you know how much I enjoy GoodNotes. The cool thing about it is that it can live on your MacBook, meaning that all of those awesome notebooks you created with all your notes can be accessed through the Mac. And yes, even that thick calculus book I showed in the last video can be accessed here pretty awesome. If you want to know more, don't forget to check out our latest iPad video. For those who have checked my Mac reviews, I know you all keep asking which app I use to monitor my temperatures and that's TG Pro. It's not a free app, I did have to pay for it, but it's so worth it. Whenever I'm in Unity, it definitely lets me know when the fans kick in and displays the exact RPMs. It just goes above and beyond showing you every single temperature sensor that your MacBook hardware has, including your trackpad, which you can use to benefit from a Windows manager like Moom. I always hover on my tiling options to allow myself to split my windows the way I want it. But for me, the funnest part about the app is that it mimics what my Windows PC has. Of course, it's not a big deal if you wish to modify your splitting points. I myself just rather the default settings. I just thought including this app was great mostly when you have so many media windows open. If you ever do find yourself wanting to download media, I've got something for you. Dowdy. Downy is a cool app which is basically a universal video downloader. The only thing is that you can't download DRM protected content like Netflix movies. Other than that, it allows you to paste YouTube links and download content at full resolution. I do find myself clicking command E so I can extract all the downloadable assets of a URL which is really nice because sometimes I do lose my own videos and thumbnails. I just recently did this with my own Instagram to extract my pictures in high definition. Sometimes I do hit a wall because these pictures are way too big in file size. So when it comes to uploading 2 megabyte thumbnails, it just doesn't work for me. Image Optim is what solves it for me. It's super easy to use because all you need to do is to drag a picture and it'll compress it. It's usually a thing I always forget to do and so I find myself doing it last minute when uploading. Which is why for me Todoist was my to-do app of choice. But the thing about Todoist is that it cannot be integrated with Notion. Although it's an app that I strongly recommend when it comes to creating tasks with descriptions, labels, priority and so on, it can overall create awesome workflows to allow yourself to complete tasks and with the paid version, you can set reminders and alarms for specific things. It was an app that I was paying for in the past, but for my own personal needs, I needed more features like the ones Notion delivers. Although if you need an app just for reminders, you're better off using Gestimer. It's a cool little app that lives in your menu bar. If you have small little reminders during the day, you can simply drag the icon to the desktop and increase the timer as you drag along. Give it a description and you're pretty much set to go. Don't worry, it's super easy to get rid of those reminders you don't need to the point that you can quickly flush them all if you happen to create a bunch of like me. Of course, there are so many other apps I use within my day, but I thought I would briefly share some of the coolest ones. Every time I use my MacBook, I end up using all of these apps when needed. I am thinking about buying a fully loaded 16 inch just because I feel like my productivity could increase by working on a Mac. I miss the old airdrop days when it came to posting on Instagram. I hope these apps help your day a bit more and if you enjoyed the video, a like would be appreciated. I gotta go home for now, take care.